What is up? It's your man Zalonius here, or my bot Ainsley. We're here today to help you learn the secrets behind building a very well rounded, balanced, ultimate team squad. A lot of people have some different ideas on how this works. I'm a top 100 player from FIFA 17, so I'd like to think I have a decent idea of how it works. We're going to be revealing some of the tips, secrets that I think are best for a balanced squad. So, boys. Check this video out. If you like it, please smash the like button, comment, subscribe to the channel, really means a lot. Here's your video. Boys, here we are. So if the first thing that's important to building a balanced team on FIFA 18, on any FIFA, and especially an ultimate team, is the formation. I'm not gonna go into any depth on formations in this video. Please check out um, the latest video that I did. And on formations, that's a more in-depth look at it. But if you don't have a balanced formation, that's kind of underpins everything. It's going to be very hard to have a balanced team. There's lots of different formations for different types of players. My particular favourite one is the 4-3-3 brackets 2. As you can see, it's got front three. It's got three in midfield to dominate midfield with a defensive mid and a stable back four. But for this video, we're going to use this formation to discuss it. So, I'll show you my team that I used for the weekend league and um, recently I came fourth in the world. And I think one of the keys to it was how balanced it was. So, start with any random keeper. Keeper isn't too important in terms of uh, being a well rounded squad, but you just want a better keeper. Keepers with long throws, though, are very useful, they allow you to quickly get a pitch. Show you my defence. Okay, look. <clears throat> a lot of the best defenders have high, medium, attacking, defensive work rates. But the key is, I would never use two of these in a squad. Work rates are very important to a balanced team on FIFA. David Luiz, high, medium. He gets away with it because he's got 85 pace and 92 physical. But. He pushes up and he would not get away with it if it wasn't for Azpilicueta. Azpilicueta, medium, medium means he just drops that little bit deeper and when in game you notice that Azpilicueta sweeps up the passes a little bit more and fills in when David Luiz would be out. I'd be very careful with using high medium defenders if they're not like elite level players. Try it if you want. but. I warned against it, I would never use too high medium, even the top, top elite players. Fullbacks. Um, there we go. We used Alonso and Kyle Walker. High medium and high high. I think at fullback, I would never use high low. I prefer medium high if possible. So high defensive, medium attacking, but there's hardly anybody on the game fullback wise who's an elite player who has that. Um, as long as they have at least medium, then if they're very good physically, that works. For fullback, the main thing you want is just physical beasts. It's Kyle Walker, 96 pace, 90 physical, 510. Alonso, 6'2, 88 pace, 92 physical. When the new game comes out, FIFA 18, you're not going to be able to do that. But make sure your fullbacks have at least medium defensive work rate and a good physically. You need good physical fullbacks because they're going to bomb up and down the pitch. You need them to sweep up sometimes when you make mistakes. So physical and good work rate is important fullback. For this formation, <coughs> where's Patrick? Come on, Patrice. Here we go, so Patrick Vieira. Um, I like my defensive mids to have medium high, at least high defensive. Means they sit back a lot more. Um, one of the keys in FIFA that people underestimate is how vital it is to have some height in the team. It's really nice in defensive mid as well, because often the goal kicks, most people just kick it straight down the middle. 
it lands at the defence's mid. Patrick Vieira, six foot four, he nearly wins every single header. It's really useful. So, high defensive work rate right there. It's really good. Where's my boy Kante? No, not Harry Kane. We're not putting Harry Kane in centre mid. We're not the Penfers. Kante. And Pogba. So, when it comes to this free midfield, I think on FIFA it's very hard to fit in creative players. We don't yet know FIFA 18 what it's going to be like, but <clears throat> because of Ultimate Team, all the gameplay speed set to fast and all the chemistry boosts, physical players seem the only way to go for the most part. So you want your midfield to be full of physical beasts, players who are going to be able to dominate and boss the midfield and outmuscle them. So. Players like Pogba are brilliant because they're physically good but also good on the ball. I'll show you my player instructions how I want this midfield to work. By the way, always put your fullbacks to stay back while attacking. I can't see it being any different on this FIFA, but if you don't do this, your squad's going to just look out of shape. So, I have Kante on aggressive interceptions. Only do aggressive interceptions if they've got high stamina to stay back while attacking. Vieira, I put on cut passing lane to stay back. But Pogba, because I want a well balanced team, I want a creative mid outlet in the midfield. I don't just want a whole defensive formation. Get forward, get into the box because he's tall, and free row. I find in game the free row mixed with a stay back while attacking mid right centre mid and defensive mid really helps to have a nice, effective, flowing triangle in the midfield. I think on FIFA you need at least one midfielder who can hit a long shot. Because a lot of the time people play very defensive and the best way to break them down is with a long shot. So if you have a midfielder who's just floating around the edge of the box, you can smash one in, you can change again. <clears throat> on the wings I had Hazard and Dembele. Now, this might change drastically on FIFA 18. It's hard to know if the game not being out yet. But I had these two on cut inside because I wanted um, wingers who could do that for me and get, in, get down the middle. I don't really want them crossing. But on the new FIFA, with crossing being really strong, you may want wingers to be on the wing associated with their stronger foot. For Dembele, it's fine. But because he's got five star weaker foot. But Hazard, I would have had him on his weaker foot there. The new FIFA, you're gonna to have to learn what works for you. If you still prefer cutting inside, finessing with your wingers, then you're gonna to have to have players with right foot and left wing, vice versa. But crossing could be really OP and strong and it's not something you're gonna to wanna to miss out on. So for FIFA 18 to have a well-balanced squad, you might need at least one winger who can cross it. If you've got one striker, you can't just have a really pacey striker who's got no strength. You can't just have a beefy striker with no pace. For the one striker, you need a good all-rounded player. Obviously, the Tots Lukaku is this. When the game comes out, there's plenty of all-round strikers who are going to be useful. I'm looking at Belotti for my Road to Glory team. I'm going to be doing Road to Glory series. Hope you check that out. But... You're going to want someone who can hold it up, can head it, can win flick odds, can link the team together. Um, having a player with 5 star weaker foot, that's very useful. These players can be quite expensive there, but a 5 star weaker foot in the team can make a big difference because it's just that one player that the opposition doesn't quite know what they're going to do. Um, so boys, tips for a balanced squad. Work rates are vital. You don't want a team full of players who are just pushing up and attacking and never defending. Because it doesn't matter what you do, they're going to push up and leave gaps that you can't help. Player instructions. Make sure they're well balanced in terms of going forward and defensively. I'm going to do a separate video come FIFA 18 about them. Strength and pace. You can't just have a team full of speed demons. You also at the same time don't want a team full of just beefy tanks who can't move. So you want a mix of strength and a mix of pace. Players with good weaker foot, it makes a big difference in game. 
if you've got a team full of players with rubbish weaker foot, the opposition are just going to push you onto that, it's going to be too easy to beat you. Formation, that one, don't just pick a formation because pro players recommend it or I recommend it. Pick one that suits you. Formations are really key. Go check out the video I've posted earlier today on formations, give you a better clue about it. So there's a five big tips to how to make a well-balanced squad. But most importantly, pick a team that is full of players you love because you want to have fun. If you just pick a team full of players that you've been told are OP, maybe you'll do well, I don't know. But there's a good chance you're going to struggle and going to suffer because you're not using players that one you're good with or two you like. The last tip I'd give, make sure you've got some height in the team. With Crossing and Hedron of the new FIFA, it's going to be OP. You're really going to need to have some aerial ability. Boys, hope you liked this video. If you've got any questions about it, ask me in the feed comment section. I'd love to reply. Might be a follow up to this video at some point. Smash the like button, boys. Give me some feedback. Please subscribe to the channel. Really means a lot. Hope you've enjoyed it. Zlodio sound.